Hi everyone, it's Gina Kay from Gina Kay Designs and your host of Stamp TV. And today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you something a little bit different. Some of you who follow me on Instagram know that I like to make jewelry and I like to make paper beads. And so I finally made a bracelet out of some of the paper beads that I have made and I posted it on Instagram and asked if people would like to see a video. And a lot of you responded with a yes. So I want to show you exactly how I make paper beads. Now a little disclaimer first, there's lots of ways to make paper beads and this is not the only way. This is just the way that I came up with to do it and I think it works really well for me. So first I want to show you the bracelet that I made out of my my paper beads. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so that you can see there's a lot of detail here and this bracelet fits really nicely and it actually has some weight to it. It doesn't feel too, uh, too light, doesn't feel very papery at all. So this is something that I made with some of the paper beads that I made in the past. So let me show you the tools and products that you're going to need to make your own paper beads if you want to do it my way. So I like to use these double pointed knitting needles and you can find these at any of the big box craft shops and probably online as well. This one is a 3.25 millimeter and these are, let's see, looks like there's a variety of sizes in here but you can see I took some of them out of the package. And these are just a skinnier needle. So these are the two sizes that I like to use. And I will link all of these products that I can find underneath the video, both at Stamp TV and on YouTube, to make it a little easier for you to find them. Okay, so you're going to need some plain knitting needles. And then these are spacer beads. I just buy these at Michael's or Joann's, or you can buy them online too. And they're just beads that I put in between the paper beads. I also use these for other kinds of beading, other kinds of jewelry that I make. All right, so you're going to need those. You're also going to need some stretch cording, and I use this kind here, um, the 8 millimeter diameter. Um, and then, let's see, it says clear 0.8 millimeter diameter 5M. So I will find something very close to that to link for you. Again, I'm not a jewelry expert, so I just looked at it and thought, yeah, that looks like a, a good width. I'll just get that one. And it's nice and stretchy and it works great. And I make lots of bracelets out of this. Okay, so other things you're going to need are some glue, and you can use any kind of glue. I'm using the Tombow Mono Liquid Glue. It goes on clear and it dries clear, and I like that. Um, as long as the glue dries clear, it can be a white glue as well. I also use a Versamark pad, and I use some ultra-thick embossing powder. And this is kind of something that I do maybe a little bit differently than a lot of paper bead makers, because a lot of paper bead makers use Mod Podge to coat their beads when they're done. And that works great too. But this is fun because I use it in my stamping a lot to do cracked glass and other techniques. So I happen to have it and it works great. Then I bought this tool on Etsy from a lady who sells paper beading strips. She sells paper beads and she sells these tools that she makes. And it has two ends. One is a little bit bigger than the other end. They're very similar to paper quilling tools, but they have a thicker uh, point on the ends here, thicker tool. So I will also link her shop if you're interested in picking up one of these tools. And I think they were only like five or six dollars, so it's pretty cheap. All right, so then I've got some strips of paper here that I already pre-cut. Now, these two pieces I pre-cut from some 12 by 12 paper that I had, and these two I pre-cut from some of the Gina K Designs 6 by 6 paper packs. The difference between the two, what you're going to get is you're going to get a fatter bead or a thinner bead. So depending on what kind of bead you want, you want to adjust the length of your paper accordingly. So I wanted to show you both just so that you have an idea of what they look like. Like. All right, and the other thing that I have here is I have a box, and this box is for nothing more than a place to hang my beads while they're drying. This happens to be my dye storage box that I bought at Stampin' Storage, and today I'm using it just to sit my beads here while the glue dries and while the embossing powder cools, but you can use anything you want to uh, 
to put your beads on. All right, so let's do this smaller one first. So I'm gonna zoom in here because I want you to see how this works. And I want you to get a nice close up view. All right, so this tool has a little slot in it and you can see I have gluey fingers because I've been playing all day with this. What you're gonna do is you're gonna just slip the wide end of your paper into this tool. And I'm gonna show you how to cut the paper in just a minute. And then once it's in there, you're going to start to twist the paper. You're gonna just turn the tool and you wanna make sure that you're keeping the paper lined up properly so that as it's getting thinner, it's evenly spaced on either side. Now this is gonna be kind of an ovally bead. It's gonna have an oval shape to it. It's not gonna be super thick because it's a smaller paper. But you can see I'm keeping that tail right in the center as I'm winding it. And then it's a good idea to have your glue open. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put a little bead of glue right there like that. And then I'm going to turn it with the glue so that I keep putting pressure on it as I'm turning it with the glue. And there is a little bead. Now these beads look completely different once they're shiny. And the shininess also holds the bead together. So once you have that done, you can slip it off your tool and you can, excuse my elbow, place it onto one of these little sticks. And then you can just put it into the box and let it dry like that. Okay, so that's a skinny bead. Now for a fatter bead, you're going to do the same thing. This is a great way to use up all of that pattern paper that you don't use anymore because the weirdest pattern paper makes the most beautiful beads. So paper that you just don't think you're going to ever use, try making beads out of it. You'll be surprised how beautiful they look, even if you're not crazy about the pattern paper. So you can see what I'm doing here. I am continuing to roll this with the tail staying right in the center to keep it nice and round or oval. And I'm just taking my time. And here it comes. This is very thin at the end because obviously this is a very long piece of pattern paper. And I'm going to put my bead of glue there. You can see that's a nice high bead of glue. And then I'm going to continue to turn it. And I'm kind of sealing the outside a little bit because that glue is getting all over the outside as well. And you can see that is a perfect little rounded bead. So I'm going to pull that off of my tool and I'm going to bring that box back over again. And I'll add that bead to my little bar here. And that one is going to dry. Now, while those are drying, I'm going to show you how I cut the paper. There are dies out there that you can buy for this, but if you don't want to invest that kind of money, that is just fine. You can cut these completely by yourself. So I'm going to show you how I cut the six by six, and you can do the same thing with eight and a half by 11 or 12 by 12. So here's a fun piece of paper. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'm going to use this silver part right here. Let me get a little pointer here. The silver part of my paper cutter. This is a half inch. That silver stops at a half inch. Now, if you want longer, skinnier beads, you can go to three quarters of an inch. If you want really long beads, you can go to an inch. However long, wherever you start, that's how long your bead is going to be. And obviously, it's going to be a little bit flatter. The shorter it is, like if you do a half inch, it's going to be a little bit rounder because you don't have that far to go and your paper is going to be wider, longer, so it's gonna plump it up a little bit. I hope that made sense. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to take the edge of this paper and I'm gonna put it right up to the edge of that silver, right there. All right, so I've got that right up to the edge of that silver. And then I'm going to turn it so that the point, the very bottom part, is right on the opposite edge of the silver part. So right against the blade. 
and then I'm going to put pressure down here and I'm going to cut. So what I did here was I created a very long triangle. Now I can flip that around and I can put the top edge to the silver. Actually, let me do that again. I can put the bottom edge to the edge of the silver right there and put a little pressure, make sure that's right, and cut. And that will give me the same size piece on the other edge. So those two pieces just came off of each other like that to make a strip. All right, so there's two pieces. And I can keep doing that. I can go right to the, the left edge of the silver at the top and the right edge of the silver at the bottom. Now your paper cutter might be different. You might, yours might be gold or whatever, but you know what I'm talking about. It's that half inch mark. If yours goes all the way and says half inch, go to the half inch mark. That's going to give you a nice tight round little bead. Now, if you're using 12 by 12 paper, you just need a bigger paper cutter. You need a 12 by 12 paper cutter and you can do the same exact thing and your strips will be long like this and they'll get more narrow as they go. If you want a longer, longer bead, you can take that out further to the three quarter inch or to the one inch. You can make them as big as you want, but this size makes a very round bead. This side makes a small bead that will match this bead, but it's a little more oval because it's shorter. All right, so now my beads should be dry. So I'm going to grab those beads and I'm going to take the pink one and I'm going to grab some Versamark ink. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use that thicker um, knitting needle and I'm going to stick that in there because that's going to hold it so that it doesn't kind of flop around like on this one it's real loose and if I try to hold it up it's going to slip down on my hand. I want to get this bigger one so that it just tucks in there and stays on the edge. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my embossing powder and you can pour this in a bowl or whatever you want to pour it into. I just poured it into the lid for the sake of this video. And then you're going to roll your bead across the Versamark pad using that tool. So you want to get it completely covered with Versamark like that. Then flip it around to the other side and roll it into the ultra thick embossing powder. And then grab your heat tool and heat it. Now I would just get it a little hot first because then it'll go a little bit faster. And you can start heating this ultra thick embossing powder, turning it while you go. And this is what creates that beautiful shine. And it also makes it sturdier. It kind of holds all the papers together and makes it sturdier. Okay. So now you have this pretty shiny little bead I can get some white paper behind it. You might be able to see it a little better. That shiny little bead. Now you can do a second coat if you want. You can just heat it up again. See I have a little bubble there that has to be heated anyway. So I'm going to heat it up again. And while it's still warm and wet, you can roll it a second time in that ultra thick embossing powder. And then you can heat it up again. Just turn it a little bit until it's cool, or at least not as hot. And then that can sit and completely cool back on the box. I just put it like that and just let it cool. Now once that's completely cool, you're going to be able to pull that off and you're going to be able to start using it for jewelry. So it's still a little bit warm, but I think I can pull it off. So there you can see. It's nice and shiny and you can hear it. It's making that little sound like actually jewelry. And that is ready to be put into a bracelet.
or a necklace or earrings or whatever you want to do with it. Now, I've seen some people actually put tiny eyelets with glue on each end to finish them off a little bit. I haven't tried that yet, but that's something I want to try. I have to get smaller eyelets or I have to wind these on the bigger side of the tool to make sure that my eyelet fits. But I like the smaller hole, so I do use the smaller side of the tool. So now I'm going to show you how I make this bracelet real quick. So I have this little thing that I bought at Michael's or Joann's, one of the big box stores, and it has different bracelet sizes because I like to make bracelets for other people too. And so I'm just going to spill out a few of these spacer beads in here. And here is a little bag of some of the paper beads that are all done. And you can just make them in your free time and then just save them for projects. So these are little turquoise beads. And then here is some of that stretch cord. So I'm going to cut a piece of that. I always cut it big. This is not very expensive, so I'd rather have a little bit of extra room to work with. And then I am going to knot it at the bottom. Some people actually take a spacer bead and put a spacer bead at the bottom and knot that. This way nothing will fall off the edge. Because if you just have a knot and you have big beads like this, they can kind of fall right off. So if you put a, a spacer bead at the bottom, you can always cut that off and then use it later. Okay, so there's my spacer bead. Now I have to decide who I'm making this bracelet for. So I have a tiny wrist, so I use the six and a half inch one for me, but you might want to do a seven inch, seven and a half inch, or seven and three quarter inches. And if the person has an eight inch wrist, you can also use the line at the bottom to just judge what eight inches is. And then I like to lay these out. So I'll do a six and a half inch one because that'll take a little less time. And then I put the spacer beads in between, just so I kind of know about how many I'm going to need. Once you have this laid out, then you can get started right away with your bracelet. So that might be pretty good. I might be able to fit one more in there. We'll see. And that's the nice thing about having this spacer bead down here at the bottom is you can you can kind of test it on your own wrist to see how it looks. Okay, so I'm going to start with a spacer bead and a paper bead. And I'm just going to keep going in that same order, spacer bead, paper bead. until this whole thing is completely done. So you kind of get the idea. So if you just want to get started and you don't want to watch the rest of this video, I totally understand. But I will show you how I knot it. And then you can use a little dab of kind of like a super glue over the knot once you have the knot done. And that will kind of kind of melts everything together and it makes it very unlikely that this bracelet will will come apart. And I've used this stretch cording for years in making bracelets and I've, I haven't had any break yet so knock on wood they've all worked out pretty well. You can also lay it into one of the the um, rings while you're beading just to kind of admire its beauty as you go. I really like using this turquoise paper because the beads kind of look like turquoise beads. You can mimic different gemstones with paper depending on the kind of paper you have. Try some paper that's like maybe maybe some of you have that old kind of uh, 12 by 12 paper that's like ocean scenes or sunset scenes. You'd be surprised how beautiful those turn out. Okay, so now I'm done stringing those and now I'm going to just tie a knot like that. I'm going to tie it again like that. Then I like to go the opposite way and tie it. So I'm kind of doing the knots back and forth, back and forth. I like to do maybe four knots. And then I'll test it on myself first to make sure it looks right. That looks pretty good. And then 
I will add a dot of super glue, which I don't have here, but right onto that little knot. And then once that's done, I'll take my scissors and I will cut it very close to the knot. And what's fun about that, these, is the knot will then kind of sink into the paper bead and it keeps it very nice. That's pretty small. I could probably put one or two more beads on that, but you get the idea. So that is how you make a paper bead bracelet. I'll put mine on. Mine's a little bigger. There we go. You can see what that looks like. I hope you've enjoyed today's Stamp TV video, and I hope you'll try making some paper beads and some paper jewelry. This is a fun gift idea for the holidays to make a few stocking stuffers for somebody special on your list who would love a handmade gift. It's also a great thing to sell at craft fairs and a great little add-on gift for somebody special. Thank you so much for watching today's video and stop back soon to Stamp TV for more card projects featuring the new Stamp TV kit and some of our other holiday stamp sets.